if you wanted to create a system to make people poor and keep them poor, this is the system you would create. You get a speeding ticket, a wealthy person can go in and pay it, and a poor person cannot. I have heard judges tell people that if you do not come up with the money that you are supposed to pay tonight, I will incarcerate you. It's a fundamental misunderstanding of the law. I mean, these are basic violations of the Constitution. That's all they want is money. If you don't pay your fines, you will go to jail. Are these debtors prisons? Are these courts? A young man in 2013 hung himself over traffic tickets because he was passed from court to court to court. That was my baby. You don't outlive your children. You take away people's lives. Some people fight back. Debtors' prisons were originally created in the Middle Ages to hold debtors hostage as the ultimate collateral until their families can pay what they owed. They were outlawed in the U.S. in 1833 for being unconstitutional, but now they're seeing a return in a different form. In the South, municipalities strapped for cash have been targeting the most vulnerable citizens, who are primarily black and living under the poverty line. In Missouri, some of these municipalities generate anywhere from 20 to 40 percent of their total revenue by fining citizens. Bell Ridge, a small town of 2,700 people, collected almost a half a million dollars in fines and revenues in 2014 by issuing 7,700 tickets. That's at least two tickets for every resident. According to the ACLU, there are nine states in the country where local governments jail people for failing to pay legal fines. In 2013, the 90 municipalities of St. Louis County, Missouri alone collected $60 million in fines and court fees. Fines range from traffic violations to quality of life ordinances, which fine you for things like sagging pants, chipped paint, mismatched blinds, or even having a barbecue in your front yard. Once you receive a ticket for an offense, you have to go to court to pay the fine. If you can't pay, then you're sent to jail. When you leave jail, you could face probation fees, which only adds to the original debt you were in and couldn't afford to pay to begin with. about no criminals, we worry about the city officials. The city officials are criminals. They took out my money. Nobody will believe this is the way we live in Pageville. Valerie Whitner is a Missouri resident making less than $30,000 a year, who has received roughly $1,200 in fines annually for the past eight years. The city has threatened to bulldoze her home if she doesn't pay all of her citations for illicit barbecues and growing bamboo in her yard. It's like they go into your bank account and say, mm, I guess I need a couple of more dollars today. Let me go see if I can get Miss Whitner hit her up for a couple of hundred. Oh, by the way, Miss Whitner, it's a piece of siding up there that needs to be fixed. We got to cite you for that. Your grass is too high. Pay their ticket for not having blinds. Pay their ticket for having blinds. This don't make no sense. I have bamboo in my yard, and they cited me saying I had weed. You trying to sell me, I'm selling all kinds of my property. Now I'm getting ready to get mad because everybody know about my bamboo. He gave me a ticket because he wanted me to paint my garage. Do you see my, you see the brick? Who paints them kind of bricks? You're not gonna mess up my bricks. That's the kind of unconditional fear that you live in out here. Something as simple as that. Because you know you're gonna get a fine for it. In the 18 years I've been here, I've never had a problem until the last 10 years or so. And that started with simple citations that you might get. Then all of a sudden, it just started getting crazy. Seemed like the Gestapo. They came to everyone's house looking for things. And all my neighbors were telling me, did they come to your house? Did they come to your house? Did they ticket you? And my boss said, if I went to court, I would lose my job. So I elected not to go to court and go to work. They came to my house and arrested me for not paying the ticket. Paisdale has a set up where you don't have a choice. 
you either going to give me my money that I'm saying you got this fine on, or we will give you a warrant, and you will be arrested. They don't care if you can't afford it. They made that perfectly clear that it's not their concern. Their concern is what is owed to the court. It's all about the money. You have got to know the effort that I have put into this place. And if you're going to lock me up with my grass too high, then you go right ahead. Everybody in Paysdale is in court on Thursday. So you don't have to bother to go to your neighbor's house to see them. Go to the court. You'll see all your neighbors. People in the same situation as Valerie line up at the local municipal court to try to pay their fines and seek counsel. Stephanie Loomis is an attorney at Arch City Defenders, an organization that represents the impoverished trapped in the system. The line stretches well into the, into the bank parking lot. The people wait out here for a couple hours. This is a cash cow. These courts are created to provide revenue for the town. This system only affects the poor. The poor are the ones lined up night after night outside these courts, and the poor are the ones filling the pews. This isn't like Grand Theft Auto. These are fucking traffic tickets. We went with Stephanie just a few towns over from Pagedale to Jennings to speak with some of the local defendants outside of the municipal court. You walk in there now, it's predominantly all Caucasian male officers in there, but everybody who's sitting down is black, everybody. I don't have a criminal history or anything. I get pulled over, they search me like a criminal, pull me out the car. Like, they didn't even give me a reason why they flagged me, so. I mean, but that's normal, you know? The police out of nowhere pulled me over. And I asked him, why didn't you pull the other car over? He said, he want, just because he wanted to pull me over, basically. And the other car did the same exact thing I did, but he was a different color, and I was black. That's what it was, and so he didn't want to say it. They not catching any real criminals, though. That's my thing. Like, you filling your jails with people who go to work every day who may have uh, expired plates by a day or two, and those are the people you targeted. I've been jailed 12 times for not being able to afford my papers. They're not allowed to incarcerate you for not having money. Well, this is the law. They don't care. They still do it anyway. He just told me, basically, I'm going to have to pay the fine or I'm going to go to jail, basically. These the type of prices make you don't even want to come back to court. You know what I'm saying? They only give you a certain amount of time to pay it before they put another one out. And so that's why they lock me up. Sometimes I just don't have the money to pay a ticket. And they had me stripped to my socks and my, and my drawers and had me put on an orange jumpsuit like I was a, a, a murderer or something. I'm almost thinking about moving out of St. Louis, Missouri, just because of how the police treat people. The 90 municipalities of St. Louis County were created after white flight from St. Louis, largely to exclude poor people and minorities. Cities like Ferguson, which is 67% black, are being hit with the most fines and warrants. The average household in Ferguson has three warrants for petty violations, and these fines are the second highest source of revenue for the city. Michael Gunn, a St. Louis County Municipal Court judge, issues some of these fines and warrants. Racism exists. But I do have a, I got a, I got a problem. If you were the mayor and you wanted to make as much money as you could off of these speeders, why would you tell them to only stop poor black people? That, that sort of doesn't make much sense, does it? In addition, I don't know what evidence there is of racial profiling. I do think that there has only been one side of the story which is being told. And that side is from a perspective of poor defendants. We have a great web of, of municipalities in St. Louis County who are serving the individual citizens of those particular areas very well. The citizens, for the most part, want these courts to pay for themselves. They don't want to raise taxes to pay for it. They want people who violate the law to pay their fines. So we don't believe that because you're poor means you can violate the law. I make it an inquiry as to whether or not people are able to pay their fines. Uh, for the most part, the reply is that they are able to pay their fines. These are people who are guilty, so there's, there's something that's going to happen to them. You know, in order for this system to work, you're going to have to issue warrants. Thomas Harvey is the executive director of Arch City Defenders. In 2014, they drew national attention to these new debtors' prisons by publishing a 41-page policy paper explaining the issues and filing countless lawsuits against rogue municipalities. Municipalities in St. Louis County have never 
gone through the constitutionally required procedures to determine whether or not someone had the ability to pay before jailing them. And they target poor people and black people and then lock them in jail to extort the money from them and their family in order to meet a budget deficit. The most common charge was called failure to appear. Failure to appear just means you got fined at some point in the past and the judge threatens the person with jail if they don't come back at the next court appearance with some money. So a reasonable person doesn't walk back into the courtroom if they don't have the money. But then if you don't go back into the courtroom, a warrant is issued for your arrest. I can't overstate how serious it is because people are literally killing themselves in these jails. Charles Anthony Chapman Jr. was arrested on bench warrants for traffic tickets in 2013. He was passed from jail to jail and ultimately hanged himself with his own bedsheet in Jennings, Missouri. He was only 24 years old. That's him here holding his sons. <laughs> and if you look at that picture, he, he, he didn't want to let go. He, he, he loved his sons. Anthony was an above average student, whatever he did. He wanted to be the best. He had a band of friends. He loved his kids. That's who he was. That's who he was. That is the tragedy of all of this. Them boys miss him deeply. I'm Paul Paul, but I cannot substitute for their dad. Right down this strip of highway, that's probably where he first started getting his first traffic tickets. Oh, there they go. This is all they do. Yep. It's ticket, 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 ticket. ticket. I had a uh, little black infinity. In the neighborhood we was in, young black men were not supposed to drive infinities, no. OK? It was profiling. So Anthony had accumulated a lot of traffic tickets. Not nothing serious. Uh, running a stop sign. He got pulled over. And that's the day that they arrested my son. This is the last day I seen my son alive. My son went to St. Louis County, was in jail for five whole days. They got ready to transfer him out. He told me all the places he had to go to, Bell Ridge, St. John. I got the money and stuff. I went and paid off all those places. I and mean, then we finally transferred him to Jennings. It was $800. And I tried everything I could, but I had nothing left. He went to Jennings. He wasn't there 12 hours. Something happened inside of him. That yeah. following morning, they were knocking on my door. Little did I know that that knock on that door that day would be a true kick in my gut. No parent, no parent should ever have to go through what we've been through. I miss his hugs. <laughs> You know, I miss this hug so much. Lord, how much. Lord, always hold his beloved son, baby brother, devoted father, <laughs> protective uncle, and loyal friend. We thought we'd, we have, thought more we'd have more time. We just thought we'd have more time. That's me and my son. That's, that's... People die in here. And it's just not here in St. Louis. This is prevalent everywhere. This justice system that we have is broke, and it ought to be fixed now. It ought to be fixed immediately, and quit putting our kids in the ground and killing them.